Visual Studio Code is a very powerful IDE. Today I will show you how to compile and run your code directly from the IDE. Fortunately, Visual Studio Code is nicely documented, but most of the people don't really take the time to set it up correctly. Today we will fix that and I will show you all the necessary steps to do it. Hi, my name is Zem and welcome to my channel. So as you see here, we start with a fairly simple program. This program is just the main.cpp and we now want to compile this out of Visual Studio Code. What we need to do is we need to have first an extension installed, which is C, C++. So double check whether you have this extension installed because this offers the tasks to do what we want to do. Going back to the code, we want to compile this uh, small piece of code. What we need to do is we need to launch a task, which is exactly doing it. We do this by pressing Control, Shift and P, and then this menu pops up. What we want to do is to choose the first entry, which is Run Task. We click on that and then we do have the option of CPP Build. We do have because we have installed the extension before. We choose this one and now we can choose several options depending on what compilers you have installed on your system. Today I will show how to do it for Clang. That's why we use user bin Clang++ for that. So we click on that one and then we see it's starting building, it's building successfully and we also get here the output program main. So apparently it worked pretty nicely for a single CPP file. But what if you have several CPP files? So for instance, we have here a main.cpp file and here we have a dependency of this file, which is called line.cpp. Now, if we do the same again, we go to this menu by pressing Control Shift P. We want to run the task. And because we have recently used it now, we have the same task again and run this. Then it will compile this single file, but this single file alone will lead to a linker error because it doesn't know how to resolve the symbol of line. In order to fix this, we press again Control Shift P and we go in this case to configure task. And there we choose the task that we want to configure, in this case, the one that we also used to build the code. And then it will automatically, so Visual Studio Code will automatically create us a tasks.json file, which we can then adapt to fix this task for our needs. And here we see exactly what this task is about. And what you now need to do if you want to compile with Clang, we see that it only um, uses the file that we're currently in and passes this one to the compiler. Now what we can do when, when we say we want to compile the complete content of this folder, we just use the file directory name and say we want to compile every single CPP file that is in our current directory that we are in. Now we can go back to our main CPP file and run the task like before. We choose this task that we have now modified in our tasks.json and we run this and here we see that it is passing this um, symbol now so this means that we're compiling every single cpp file that is in this folder and it nicely passes so as long as you have all of your cpp files in a single folder this will now run otherwise obviously you need to add more folders more files that you want to run your code Using now the Control Shift P all the time and navigating through these menus is a little bit tedious and can be made much more easy. So what we want to do is we want to add a shortcut for that. In order to do that, we press here on this symbol and go to the keyboard shortcuts. You can also call this by uh, using the shortcut itself. And here you already see loads of default shortcuts. So we just go here to the JSON file by pressing this button. And here we can now enter, enter our own shortcuts. And I've already prepared this for this exercise. So in my case, I want to use the button F7. And what I want to do is to run the command run task. 
and which task I want to run, it's the same that we used before to build the active file. So now if I go back to my main.cpp file and I hit just F7, it will recompile my code and I'm ready to go. But what good is the code that I want to run if I have just compiled it, but I'm not able to run it out of the IDE? So the next step that we want to do is to add debugging functionalities. What we need to do there is firstly to install two additional programs. So what we need to do is to install the LLDB, which we can do by using sudo apt-get install lib LLDB minus dev. And if we install that, in my case, I have already done it. It will install it with the particular version. So this version is necessary for um, Visual Studio Code and we need to add an additional symbol or symbolic link um, to cover that. So the, because this is now the debug server that we have installed and Visual Studio Code will use this afterwards to debug the code. Because we now have installed the package, I just used the update db function to update the um, the folders and so on and the files so I can locate and find out which version was actually installed and now I'm just looking for LLDB minus server and here I see that I have now the version 13 on my system and I have here already created the sim link before but you need to do this again by using uh, exactly that command here. So we create the symbolic link, which is called 13.0.0 .0 to the file 13, because somehow this 13.0.0 uh, .0 is required by Visual Studio Code. Otherwise, it will probably not run if you use the Clang compiler. So yeah, it already exists in my case, so I cannot do that, but you should be able to do that. Now, the last thing that we need to do is to um, install the actual debugger, um, which we can do by using um, the LLDB debugger and by using or by checking out and building this one from source. So what we need to do is we need to clone from the official repository, um, clone this LLDB, it's quite small, so it's already finished. Then we go inside this directory and this one is built by CMake, so we just use CMake dot, and then it will run CMake if you have CMake installed on your system. Otherwise, you need to install CMake before that, obviously. Then we go uh, and we build that CMake, um, I think minus minus build dot, and then it will compile the program. So depending on your system, this might take a while. After it has finished compiling, we just need to move the resulting um, executable to our user for space. So we use uh, the copy of what we have currently compiled to use a bin. Um, and now it's also accessible for everybody else on the system. Now we can back, go back to Visual Studio Code and actually launch this part of code. In order to get the debugger running, I will add here a breakpoint in line 10, for instance. Now I can use again the run task command, so control shift P and use um, the build and debug active file. I click on that and here it allows me again to choose which one. So I just choose the for, uh, first one in this case. It will compile using the command that we used before and then it will launch this program in debug mode. And we see because I set here a breakpoint already, we see that it holds at exactly this pro uh, at the, that exactly this point, and we see, for instance, that we have here the locals begin and end. We see the line has already this the length at this point is still zero. So if we step one further, then probably the length gets updated, and it does. And that's basically it. You are able to compile and to launch your program and even debug it directly inside Visual Studio Code with just a few tweaks to make. That's all from my side today. Thanks for listening. If you like the content and want to hear more of that, please subscribe and otherwise, happy coding.